All right, welcome back to the channel. So Errol Spence Jr. took to Twitter just to put his uh, two cents out there and is reminding people uh, who are wondering what's going on with him that he wants the Terrence Crawford or your Danny's Ugas next. No tune-ups, no excuses. Let's talk about that in this video. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. So uh, going to talk again about one of the best fights that can be made in boxing and a fight that I, I continue to make these videos uh, because number one, I'm a big Errol Spence Jr. fan. I'm a big I'm a big fan of Terrence Crawford's abilities in the ring. And I think that if these guys wind up fighting, that we really can not get one of those special fights that we talk about that we see every once in a while, like the Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Uh, you know, Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler, those type of fights. I believe that these two guys are centerpieces in getting that type, those type of fights happening. And, and they've been that way over the last couple years. Uh, but, you know, obviously, Errol Spence Jr., there were some question marks on Errol because he uh, tore his eye, uh, his, the, his, his retina, tore his retina, or I think his, they didn't detach, but tore his retina in the lead into the Manny Pacquiao fight. So he uh, got sidelined and wasn't able to fight one of those really good fights, which would, you know, and, uh, and as a result, a lot of people are wondering what he's going to do. And it kind of leaves the titles and, and all of that landscape a little bit, you know, uncertain. Right. Uh, but Errol Spence Jr. Says he doubles down on what he was, what he's been saying for years, which is that it's strap season. And that, you know, he's not trying to come back and do any type of tune-ups. He said people that need tune-ups, that means that these guys aren't confident in their ability and that he's confident in his ability and going right back towards the top and fighting the, and fighting the best guys. And if, what he, if he gets what he wants, then you know that means that's the Terrence Crawford fight or, or your Danny Zugas fight as it is right now. Now, I was thinking when I was doing the video and, and just kind of thinking through what I was going to talk about, you know, I thought about saying, you know, the the Sean Porter Terrence Crawford fight, uh, but the closer we get to the Sean Porter fight, the more faith that I have in Terrence Crawford winning the fight. I'm not sure if it's just me, you know, um, listening to the media. I don't know if the media is affecting me or whether it's not me just really having a lot of, uh, you know, uh, respect for Terrence Crawford. It's nothing that I've seen you know, Terrence Crawford do or Sean Porter do that has made me feel like, you know, that this fight is leaning heavy, more heavily towards um, Terrence Crawford. But I just kind of get this gut feeling that uh, Terrence Crawford is going to win that fight. I, I favored Terrence Crawford before, but the closer we get to it, the more that I think, yeah, the Terrence Crawford probably more than likely is going to win the fight ag against Sean Porter, not to eliminate, um, you know, any chance of Sean Porter winning the fight. Because he does have a chance to win the fight, and also not diminishing at all, uh, Terrence Crawford, you know, for beating Sean Porter. I still maintain, you know, that everything is the same as it was, and that this is the most, this is the biggest challenge for Terrence Crawford that he's had in his career, um, and that you know he, if he beats Sean Porter, he really does, you know, prove that he belongs, you know, as a top welterweight. I think he already belongs as a top welterweight. I, I don't think that he needs it to, to prove that. Um, I just think, well, as far as like being pound for pound, number one and all that, which is something that I think Terrence Crawford is, I think that he needs that, you know, to, for, for, for that reason. Because he, you know, it would be the first real guy at 147 pounds that, he, that he's fought. But it's the closer we get to the fight, the more I comfortable I feel, I feel with picking Terrence Crawford to win the fight. Um, I, right now, you know, I originally thought it might be like, you know, 52, like a, you know, 51, 49 fight, but I'm feeling more now that it may be getting closer in my mind to like, you know, a 55, 45 for, for Terrence Crawford. The thing, you know, that I was analyzing about it is the punching power for Sean, for Sean Porter. And the fact that Sean Porter really doesn't have a lot of knockouts, um, or, and he hasn't had any knockouts against those top level guys. So, um, I don't know if he's really going to have anything to keep Terrence Crawford off of him other than kind of the mauling and all that. But anyway, I digress. Uh, but as far as, you know, what, who's going to be there when Terrence Crawford, when Errol Spence Jr. comes back from that eye injury, 
I feel like it's going to be Terrence Crawford, and also I feel like it's still going to be your Danny's Ugas. Um, the your Danny's Ugas fight, however, as we know, has been pretty much blocked by the WBA. The WBA is in the midst of consolidating a lot of belts um, after they were ordered by the America by the Associ Association of Boxing Commissions to get rid of a lot of titles. So they're running this mini tournament over there at 147 pounds for the WBA. Um, that is going to keep your Danny's Ugas busy for a while, it, probably for the next year, right? So if Errol Spence Jr. really is coming and talking about coming back out, more than likely the person that he's talking about fighting and going straight to is going to be a Terrence is going to be a Terrence Crawford fight. And I would, and now I don't mind it at all. You know, I was hoping originally that it would be got kind of used to the idea. Rather, I don't know, say if I was really supporting the idea, but I think I got used to the idea that if Terrence Crawford and Errol Spent met, met, it was going to be at the top. It was going to be for the undisputed title. But the way that it looks like now, it seems like their collision course is is going to be before all, you know, all either one of them, the between before the two of them have all of the belts collect collectively, which adds another bit of a level of um of obstacle to the um to the fight, or maybe it alleviates a better way, may maybe to say that it alleviates an ob, uh, obstacle to the fight, and that is the purses. Now, if Errol Spence Jr. before when Errol Spence Jr. was talking about fighting Terrence Crawford, and there was a lot of or, a lot of talk about what the purses were going to be, um, you know, I again was saying this, assuming that you know Errol Spence Jr. was going to get all three of those belts, and then Terrence Crawford would have one belt. But if that's not the case. And with Terrence Crawford coming off of a win against Sean Porter and, you know, and the necessity of Errol Spence Jr. fighting Terrence Crawford, I'm thinking that that may push the negotiation for the fight to be closer to a 50-50 fight. Now, I know that one, because that was one of the big hangups for Terrence Crawford when he said he was tired of talking about the fight. Really, it, I think a lot of that came around the fact that Errol Spence was insisting. Well, I'm not going to say he's insisting because they were never actually in a negotiation. But, you know, the back and forth that you get in the media, uh, Errol Spence Jr. was like, look, man, he, it's a 60-40 fight if, you know, unless I change my mind and I go 70-30. When he said that, I was like, man, that's not a 70-30 fight with Terrence Crawford. My personally, my personal opinion is I think I would love it if they could find a way to split, have that fight be 50-50, a 50-50 per split between the two of them, because I think that that is what it probably needs to take needs to take place in order for the fight to happen and for Terrence Crawford to feel like he is being treated fairly based on all of the different things he's done in his career. Now, while he's not, you know, had the big pay-per-view shows that 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 Errol Spence Jr. has had, I mean, he's been a champion in multi divisions. He's and he definitely brings a lot of the um, extra views to the fight. So I'm hoping that maybe, you know, if it because the fight happens sooner than it than I had expected it to, that Errol Spence and the PBC would be more willing, you know, to make sure that er that Terrence Crawford feels comfortable in the amount of money that he makes for the fight. But, you know, as far as the fight between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford go, just in my gut, man, I would I would rather have Errol Spence Jr. fight maybe Ugas first before fighting Terrence Crawford because I because even though it's not the longest layoff in the world, I think that Errol Spence, I think it's close enough a fight where Errol Spence Jr. needs to be sharp as he possibly can be, you know, to win the fight. Same thing for Terrence Crawford. He's going to have to be as sharp as he can be to win that fight. Um, and so I just want to see them both in the best shape that they possibly can be for the fight. But anyway, it's good to know that Errol Spence Jr. is still pushing for the fight. Um, he's not standing out there saying that he's not, you know, that some purse split and all that stuff is going to stand in the way. He's pretty much saying, no, I want a champion right when I come back because other than that, you know, because I'm confident in my ability. And I, and I appreciate that. And I certainly hope that, you know, I hope that comes to pass. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces. Thank you.